What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about how to beat your friends at poker. Just do this. Let's jump right into it. All right, so we've all been there. You're with your buddies, maybe your high school buddies, whatever. You're playing your $5, $10 home game. This is the kind of poker that is absolutely everywhere. This is where most people actually play the game are these Friday, Saturday night games, and they require a very different strategy than the strategy you use to win, whether you play online poker or in a more formal setting, like say in a $1, $2 game at your local casino. These home games are often very wild and unpredictable. You're playing against a lot of people, sometimes they're a little bit inebriated. So you need to know these four tips that I'm going to give you today to start having much better success against your friends in these games. Let's jump right into it. All right, so the first two tips I'm gonna give you are gonna be strategy and the final two are gonna be more mental game and sort of how to approach bad beats and stuff like that. Let's get into the strategy first. So number one, guys, is do not, do not get tricky if you want to beat your friends in your Friday night home game. Because guys, what you need to know is that amateurs in a $10 Friday night home game, they're not gonna respect your raises and they're not gonna respect your bluffs. If you played online poker like Play Money, which is what most people actually play on the internet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nobody folds anything. It is literally no fold em. If anyone looks down and they've got king seven offsuit, I call. I've got, uh, you know, 10, eight offsuit, I call all in. You know, it's a good hand. I can make a straight with it. You guys understand what I'm talking about. You have to understand the mentality of the players that you're playing against in these home games. And you need to also understand that these are not serious poker players. I'm gonna get to that in a second, by the way. So. You need to understand how these people think about the game. They're just there for fun, to have a laugh. Again, they're often having a drink or two. It's a $10 game. It's not about taking this seriously. It's not gonna be a huge score, you know, at the end of the night, nobody's really there for profit. So you need to understand that most people are gonna call you with a very wide range of hands, no matter how much you decide to raise it pre-flop. So let's give you an example here. You know, you raise it up with Ace, King of Diamonds and your half drunk friend calls you pre-flop with whatever. I mean, it can literally be anything from like queen two to ace seven to eight nine suited to uh, pocket fours, literally any two cards. He could have a really good hand as well, he or she. They could have pocket aces that they're slow playing. I mean, guys, it's literally everything. So flop comes down with a six, seven, eight rainbow, rainbow meaning three different suits, and none of them is a diamond, which is the two suits that we have. Guys, in this situation, please just check. Do do not get tricky and try to run some sort of sophisticated bluff against this kind of player because like I've mentioned in many of these videos before, by the way, make sure you guys are subscribed. Check out all my strategy videos here on YouTube. If you try to get tricky against one of these half drunk amateurs, your high level, 10th level thinking that you saw Daniel Negreanu do at some million dollar final table is just going to go whoop completely over their head and they're just going to call you down and you're just gonna get more and more frustrated because you don't have anything. You've got a really bad hand, honestly, here. We have no backdoor draws and on a board like this, six, seven, eight, guys, you need to understand that this is the kind of board that hits so many hands. Any kind of suited connector at all from five, four, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight. all of these hands literally love this board. In fact, several of them have actually flopped the nut straight or they have two pair. All, all of the uh, the middle pocket pairs, the pocket threes, all the way up to like pocket tens or higher, of course, they all love this board, guys. Any of those hands, like an ace seven, a king nine, these are all sorts of hands that amateurs play. They all love this board, guys. They're not going to fold. Now, to be fair, we do have the best non-pair hand, but we literally have no backdoor draw. We, there's no diamond on this board. There's no sort of backdoor straight draw that we have. We have nothing. So guys, please do yourself a favor and just check in this spot here. And if they bet any kind of sizable amount, just get out of the way. I know it's painful, guys. You've been waiting for a good hand like this forever, but sometimes you have to have that discipline in home games like this in order to beat your friends. Now let's flip the script a little bit in example number two and show you the opposite. 
All right, guys, so there's a flip side to everything in poker. You know, there's a yin and a yang. While we saw in the last example, we have to play with a disciplined approach versus our half drunk friends in these home games. You know, when we miss the flop completely, when we nail the flop, it's a completely different story. We want to be value betting them relentlessly. A value bet in poker is when you are very likely to have the best hand. Remember, we know they're gonna call us down with anything at all. So of course, on the flip side, we want to be value betting them relentlessly when we have anything at all. So let's go through the example again. We raise it up once again with our ace, king of diamonds and our half inebriated friend here calls us with whatever flop comes down this time with the ace, seven, eight rainbow. Guys, please bet big in this situation. Don't bet small. Pot is say $20. Don't bet $4. Don't bet $8. Bet $15. Bet $20. <laughs> Seriously, guys. If they're gonna call you down with anything, this is the exploitative approach that you can take. I talk about this in all my poker books. I talk about this in my brand new poker university training. I'll have links to all that in the description below, is that while we have to make disciplined folds versus a lot of amateurs, like in the previous example, in a situation like this, we can make highly exploitative adjustments and bet like literally pot and get them to call in a situation where they should never be calling, but we know that amateurs will and again this is all about the psychology of understanding how they think about the game now speaking about the mental side of the game let's dig a bit deeper now into the psychology of an amateur poker player and how to beat your friends at a home game all right, so tip number three to beat your friends at a home game is do not get tilted. This is one of the biggest areas where people suffer from in poker that holds them back. Seeing this again and again with my students throughout the years is the mental game is what holds them back. So guys, we need to be prepared to get a ridiculous amount of bad beats. That's what amateurs, your half drunk friends in your home games are gonna do because they're gonna call you down with bottom pair. They're gonna call you with ace high. They're gonna call you with anything. And of course we know that those hands have some sort of mathematical likelihood to improve to the best hand by the turn or by the river. Whether that's 5%, whether that's 15%, 25%, even if their odds are very low like that, those do come through sometimes. So we should not be shocked when it happens. We need to be prepared for some truly insane suck outs, bad beats, and so on. You know, sometimes they're gonna call you on the flop with literally five high and the turn is gonna come with a five and the river is gonna come with a five and you got your pocket aces and you're just like, uh, head explode, what, what literally just happened here? But guys, we need to understand this is how amateurs think about the game. They will call you with five high and sometimes the turn and river will come with a five and a five and it's going to make your head explode. So do not be surprised when it happens guys because it simply will happen sometimes. These are the mathematical odds that are built into the game of poker. I've talked about this in many of the videos on this channel in the past that this is the fish tax that we all have to pay. They're gonna get lucky sometimes and they're gonna hit their miracle draw against you and it's going to make your head spin. But if we're prepared for this, if we know it's going to happen, then we're not gonna flip out in the moment. We're not gonna be shocked. We're not gonna be frustrated and, and so on because we know it's gonna happen. This is how the game of poker works. Let's move on to our final point, number four. All right, so my last tip for you to beat your friends at poker consistently is to let them have their laughs, guys. I played in a lot of home games myself, especially when I was just starting out my poker career uh, against a lot of my friends and uh, high school buddies and stuff like that. I've actually told the story Story on this channel before about how I originally got started in poker is I had some success, some lucky success in some home games and it propelled me to get into online poker and eventually become a pro and all that. For those of you guys who know my story, but what's gonna happen guys is that they're gonna needle you, all right? Once you get serious about poker, and I'm assuming that any of you guys watching this video right now are probably reasonably serious about poker. You know, anybody who's watching my videos on YouTube here has some sort of serious interest in the game. So guys, when they beat you in a pot and they're absolutely going to beat you in some pots, they're gonna needle you about it, okay? They're really gonna try to get under your skin because after all, you are the semi-pro or the pro and you know, you take this game much more seriously than they do. They just play, you know, on the weekend for a laugh and you are studying during the week, you know, you're putting in the hours at the tables. Maybe you're
you're studying in a program like Poker Tracker or something like that, which I recommend. I'll have links for all of that again in the description below. But guys, you need to understand that this is going to happen as well. We need to just allow the fish to have their fun at the poker table. This is something I've talked about many times before in these videos in my books and on my blog. And you need to just let them have their fun, you know, just laugh along with them. That is often the best strategy that, that I've ever found is to just not take it seriously and understand it's going to happen. Don't take it personally or anything of that sort, because what we always need to remember, guys, is that we are the ones, we're the ones that are going to have the last laugh because, of course, the math, the odds, the statistics in the game are on our side. Our pocket aces are going to hold up the vast majority of the time against their five high when they call us on the flop. And therefore, you know, you cannot fight the math over the long run in this game, guys, and expect to win. But they're going to beat us sometimes and they're going to try to get under your skin. Don't allow that to happen. Stay focused on the long term goal. Guys, let me know in the comments how you beat your friends at poker. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet as well. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you next week.